Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Cool and pretty dark today. Getting a little rain, which was much needed, so that's great. Not much solar coming in, but that's okay. All systems are pretty full from the past previous days. But it's a chilly 63. We're freezing in Hawaii. <laughs> And although it's not a great solar day, we are catching some sun. Even in these darker skies, these panels are producing, charging the system up, at least probably what will be used today. And 30 years now living on solar, every single day, never been without power one day in 30 years. And in 30 years, a lot of the equipment has changed. Here's an old Xantrex charge controller that I still use to pump a little water. Got it hooked up to a Chins battery here, which runs perfectly as all you guys know. The battery technology has changed dramatically in the past 30 years, as well as the charge controllers. This is not an MPPT, which we are all accustomed to using now. This is the old, uh, Oh, <laughs> come on, dig deep in the gray matter, Bob. Uh, this is the old pulse width modulation or PWM type charge controller. This was state of the art 30 years ago, and it still works really good. You have to pop the cover off and dial in your charging parameters, but as you can see, everything's looking real good. And it does work well, but I use the MPPTs now because they work much better. And as well as the uh, charge controllers have changed, we all know the batteries have changed. Here's some last remnants of what I lived on for most of the past 30 years, which are lead acid batteries, which I never uh, hope to handle one again. And here's one being covered up by the jungle that I just haven't hauled in to get recycled. But that was the last of my lead acid, and this thing's been sitting here now for a few years because now we're on lithium iron phosphate, thank goodness, because uh, I risk a back injury now even thinking about moving this. But I have to say that, you know, all those years living on lead acid did fine, uh, had plenty of power. They just didn't last as long, and they weren't, of course, able to uh, be worked as hard, but we worked them out in the day. And 30 years ago, I largely used panels of this size. These are all 100 watt monocrystalline solar panels, uh, which you can get for well under a hundred dollars a piece now. And 30 years ago, a hundred watt solar panel was, you know, like $450. So the great thing about, as well as the technology has improved for much of this uh, equipment, the price keeps coming down. And instead of using those pulse width modulation charge controllers now, we're all gravitating towards these MPPT, which are just so great. Uh, there's just so much to be said about these and they all come with apps now. And you can look up here and see I've got a 700 watts, what I've just showed you outside of an array coming into this system. And even on this darker day on 700 watts, you would think, oh, it's not producing much. And it's still near 200 watts coming in. Shows you your battery voltage. These are things that we did not have 30 years ago. And it has made living on solar so much easier. And again, on the app, you know, with these new charge controllers, you can look back and see what you've been using, what you've been replacing every single day. Each one of those bars shows a day of charging. And then you can see today on a darker day, not so good, but still charging your battery. And for charging everything in your house now, we use pure sine wave inverters now. They work extremely well. Um, 
Back in the day, we just used what was called modified sine wave, and sometimes on some equipment, it didn't work as well. But for the most part, even the modified sine wave was just fine. Now modified sine wave is dirt, dirt cheap. And, but I would not recommend going modified sine wave. I would always recommend using pure sine wave because all your electronics will will read the pure sine wave the same as your regular household energy if you're tied up to the grid. So that's a huge change as well, and the price keeps coming down on these as well. And the great thing about running lithium iron phosphate compared to the old lead acid days where we used to have to try to monitor our usage just in the top 50%, you know, never drawing your battery bank below 50% or risking degradation, those days are gone. You can draw these all the way down if you need to, to do it, and you don't really suffer any degradation or, or lifespan on your batteries. So uh, I've got near three years coming up on uh, these batteries, and they act just as if they were brand new, still, which that's amazing. And I don't have to watch it like I used to, you know, 30 years ago, you'd get down to about that 50% of your lead acid. So you really only had, you know, half the capacity of real usable energy without wearing your batteries out before their time. These, I pretty much run from about 20% full to about 80%, and you just actually can get added years of lifespan on your batteries nowadays. So. Uh, the lithium iron phosphate has been a huge game changer for all of us living off grid. And again, with these charge controllers, it just takes all the guesswork out. These charge controllers all have lithium iron phosphate profiles. That is just a plug and play and takes a lot of the guesswork out of keeping your battery system healthy. And there's just a multitude of pure sine wave inverters to choose from. Right here is a Victron. Another top quality inverter, works very well. Lots to choose from these days. And another thing that we used to never have were battery monitors that you can simply hook up to where at a glance you can see what your uh, battery capacity is, just like a gas gauge in your car. Uh, that's way different too. Never really had that going on either. So it's all changing and for the better. But right here is the biggest change for me in the past 30 years, and that's running large appliances. 30 years ago, we never considered running electric refrigerator freezers, such as this 20 cubic foot LG refrigerator freezer here. And my solar guy back up in the mountains of Colorado back then, uh, we always just went with uh, propane refrigerator freezers because the amount of solar we had to build uh, to run a refrigerator this size, and they weren't as efficient either. This thing only draws like 50 to 70 watts when it's running, and, and then that freezer only draws about uh, 60 watts. So back in the olden days of living on solar, you had to build huge arrays because the refrigerators were not as efficient as they are now. So we always just said, and my solar uh, supplier always said the same thing, just stick with propane because propane was really, really cheap. So that's what we did for a refrigeration back then because you did have to build huge solar arrays and increase your battery capacity. And although some people did it, it was a very expensive adventure. And nowadays with all of the appliances being so so efficient, it just doesn't take that much. And a long time ago, we had to use uh, chargers a little more often. I used to have a great big pulse width modulation uh, inverter charger. And in the darker days in winter time, we had to run a generator uh, more often. Now I do still have this uh, blue smart charger from Victron hooked up to my big system here, but with a thousand watts of solar coming in here, um, 
I really don't have to use it. It's there in case we ever get some extremely dark days. I have had to use this, you know, maybe once in the past few years or twice to really get my batteries up. But having to use a generator now, uh, especially with the price of solar panels, uh, I can just add panels because they're so cheap and it's basically eliminated the need for generator backup. I always keep a generator as backup in case some sort of weird event comes along, but I can't remember the last time I actually had to use this, uh, but it's there in case something weird happens. But uh, nowadays it's just so easy to build a larger system and so much cheaper that yeah, it's nice to be off the generator. And I can say I am basically off the generator. Got it for backup. Don't need it. And that's good. And another thing we always, always shied away from was anything with a heating element because they drew so much power, which could really tax the lead acid batteries. But right here, just got a little mini coffee maker that still, when it's running, draws about 550 watts. So we stayed away from that. We used to just, you know, use the old cone filters on top of your coffee mug and, and pour your hot water through there, made a great cup of coffee. But now the luxury of being able to use things with heating elements that draw a lot higher wattage, it's not a problem. So yeah, 550 watts, but it's only drawing that for a few minutes. Now, we could have used that, you know, years ago, but I'm telling you, we shied away from ever using anything with a heating element. No hot plates, no coffee makers, none of that kind of stuff. We use propane for all of that kind of stuff of anything that you needed heat for, like a stove. So here's a real simple system that I've been running for a few years now here. And you know, you can hook your induction cooktop here to, cook up your meals, whatever you want to do, no problem whatsoever. And like I said, the, the lithium batteries, they work so well, they can take it. Big game changers in the solar industry, especially in the past, just the past few years, everything's changed up quite a bit. And everything's just getting cheaper and cheaper. I'm going to keep saying that because uh, it can do anything you want. So now I use a little propane to keep warm on the lanai on these frigid 63 degree mornings. <laughs> and that's not very efficient, but it sure feels good. So yeah, 30 years later, still living on solar, even better than I was in the early days. And I can't tell you when I first hooked up my first solar panel, I had a 50 watt solar panel that cost $250 used, I believe. That's how expensive they were. Hooked up to one 12 volt battery in a little trailer up in the mountains at about 8,300 feet. And I thought that was the coolest thing. And here it is all these years later and it's still the coolest thing. Not ever looked back one day. Yeah, it is addicting though, you guys. As soon as you start, you'll be like, oh, I can get a little more. So that's how it goes. But lack for nothing. Aloha. Hey, sun's actually trying to peek through here. I guess I'll run and look at my Victron app and see how much is coming in. <laughs> all fun. All fun. Solar works.